hoping to plan a trip to Italy, and I think one of the spots I might like to hit is Siena, which is the home of panforte. And panforte simply means strong bread, but it is very much a dessert, and it's strong in that it's got strong sweetness to it, honey and sugar, and the strength of crunchy almonds and hazelnuts, and then some spices, and then the dried fruits. It's complex, yet simple at the same time, but it's not at all complex to make. I first preheat the oven to 300 degrees, and it's all about the quality of ingredients going in, which is why stopping by Barbara's for her freshly toasted hazelnuts and almonds makes such a difference. Three quarters of each, and it's so nice that she sells the hazelnuts toasted and peeled. If you're buying hazelnuts and you're just buying them in a package, you can assume they've not been toasted. So they take 10 minutes in a 350 oven, just on a baking tray, and then that'll draw out the nuttiness. It'll toast the oils within the nut, and it really changes the texture and the flavor of the nut. So it's an important step. I'm just roughly chopping the hazelnuts, just to break them up a little bit. If there are a few whole ones in there, that's okay. And I'll do the same with the almonds. All those beautiful toasted almonds. and a cup of candied peel. This is mixed peel, so it's a combination of orange and lemon. If you favor a little more orange or a little more lemon, you can switch it up. It just has to equal a cup. Now, this is really where the character in Penforte comes out in the spices. Two teaspoons of cinnamon, two teaspoons of ground ginger, and then about a teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg. The last secret ingredient, a little bit of fresh ground pepper. Half a cup of all-purpose flour, and a quarter cup of cocoa powder. So I'll give this a stir. So now I'm ready to cook the honey and the sugar. I need a cup and a third of sugar. And I did say it was sweet. And two thirds of a cup of honey. I'll turn it on high and add my butter. About three tablespoons of butter. thermometer and the temperature I'm looking for is 245 degrees Fahrenheit and this takes about eight minutes but sometimes it can take less it really depends on your stove so the candy thermometer is the best way to ensure accuracy I've greased a nine inch pan and lined the bottom and the sides with parchment paper because of the honey it could stick 30 40 all right, so we've hit 245. It does not take long. So this is where you have to work fast because now I've got hot sugar. I want to be careful. You never want to come in contact with it. And I pour that over top. All right, I just stir it until I see that all the dry ingredients have been picked up. It starts cooling down and becomes really sticky. But boy, you can smell the spices in there. And I'll scrape it into the pan. So I spread the mixture and it's setting up as we speak. I'll pop it in that 300 degree oven, and now I bake this for 30 minutes. Not for any other reason other than to cook out the rawness in the flour. It just needs that half an hour in the oven. Then I'll let it cool completely, and it'll be ready to slice and serve. Mike and Tina are gonna love it. Well, I am definitely feeling the urge to travel to Italy. I've taken care of the soup and desserts. And of course, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make some pasta next. Hey!